good morning. Uh, well, we are still waiting for two more members for uh, our council quorum. We are going to begin today's meeting, and we do have some special presentations. So, um, Mr. Zein. Let me recognize Mr. Zine and Mr. Garcetti for some You're introductions. Up. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Councilman Garcetti and I are uh, going to bring some festivity to the council chamber in our community today on this beautiful day of Cinco de Mayo. And some people wonder, what is Cinco de Mayo all about? Well, we know it's about a special day. It's a day that commemorates the anniversary of the Mexico's Battle of Puebla, where a small army of Mexican people in the leadership of Benito Juarez defeated the Emperor Maximilian's French army and freed the Mexican people of French rule. And that's what the day of celebration is about. And to uh, give you a, a further explanation, our rogue scholar historian, <laughs> Council Member Eric Garcetti. Thank you, Mr. Zine, and happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. Um, the, the story of Cinco de Mayo actually is not just a, a Mexican story, it's an American story. Um, and it had ramifications for United States as well as for the people of Mexico. Um, when General Zaragoza, uh, who President uh, Juarez asked to defend this small town of uh, uh, Juarez um, in 1862 on May 5th, uh, went there, the context of what was happening at the time was that there was uh, Napoleon III, whose army, the French armies had been undefeated for a half century in Europe, came to Mexico to get uh, their money from the, the Mexican government. Uh, Mexico was pretty bankrupt at the time, had lost a lot of land in the, in the north uh, to the United States, um, and didn't have much money, so they came to kind of claim what was theirs. But if you can remember in 1862, of course, that was when we were in the Civil War here. And um, the threat, and interestingly enough, a couple of facts, Z Zaragoza, the general, was actually American born in Texas. Um, and uh, so we celebrate a, a Tejano, a, a Texan who helped defeat the, the French. But the second thing was that if they had defeated the Mexican army, they were threatening to come all the way up to the border and to help the South during the Civil War. So while President Lincoln was trying to keep this country together, it was a very important victory. And in fact, uh, because of the victory in Puebla on Cinco de Mayo, uh, they're able to hold back the, the French army for some time, enough for us to win the Civil War, keep the country unified, and then uh, a million battle hardened veterans of the U.S. Army uh, were available very quickly and many of them went down to the border uh, to make sure that the French knew uh, that they shouldn't uh, uh, continue northward. So it was a very important day not only for the, the pride of Mexico but for the unity of the United States and it's a day that we can celebrate as Americans, as Mexicans, as Mexican-Americans um, as well. So with that I'll hand it back over to uh, Council Member Zine who's going to have the first of our, our two special presentations today. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, the young lady that we're going to hear sing for us this morning, uh, I saw at an event in Canoga Park at the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center, and she performed that afternoon, and I was so impressed. I asked Medusa Espinosa from my staff to get information because Cinco de Mayo was around the corner. I wanted to make sure that the people of Los Angeles could see the talent of this young 10-year-old young lady who's a student, an honor student at Tulsa Elementary School in Councilmember Smith's district, but she was performing in Canoga Park in my district, so uh, we're very honored to have her here today with us. Uh, she has two CDs, and she's uh, appeared on numerous television interviews, uh, a very talented 10-year-old singer, and I think someday we'll see her on uh, Star Search and with Ryan Seacrest at Hollywood and Highland, and all the other activities, uh, we're seeing an emerging star before us. So I'd like to introduce to you Alejandra Vargas, who's going to sing for us this morning, La Concino Mexicana. And the microphone is now yours. Alejandra. Y que lleno de emociones me encuentro con mi jarana Voy a rendir homenaje a la canción mexicana Voy a rendir homenaje a la canción mexicana 
homenaje a la canción más galana, a la canción más primorosa que la canción mexicana. Va a ser besos en montones, no hay como el americano. Va a conquistar corazones, no hay mejor que un mexicano. ¿Y cómo es que la consigue si no cantando canciones como el cielito lindo que alea los corazones? ¡Ay, ay, ay, chiquitito! ¡Esas palmas! No hay otra cosa más linda que las mañanitas frías Cantarle a mi rancherita mañanitas tapatía Que causan mucha alegría, que emociona el cuerpo mío Que los sones abajeños de un mariachi tapatío ¡Y échale! La canción mexicana, la que se mereció no Por ser la más primorosa que alimenta el amor Hay canciones extranjeras que alborotan la pasión Pero ni una se compara con esta dulce canción Que si Adelita quisiera ser mi novia Y si Adelita fuera mi mujer le compraría un vestido de sea para llevarla a bailar al corte. Gracias. Alejandra, we're very uh Honored to have you here today. I know you got to cut school for a little bit and you got to go back to school to keep those grades up. You started singing when you were four years old and here you are 10 years old. And we're very pleased to have you here today with us in Los Santa City Council. And we have a recognition certificate for you in celebration of your talent and extraordinary contributions to your community. The San Fernando Valley is blessed to have talent in its midst. Thank you for sharing your voice with the city of Los Santos on this very festive day, Cinco de Mayo. Congratulations to you and continue with the singing, continue with the schoolwork, and we're going to see you on the Hollywood stage someday, the big stage. God bless you. Congratulations, Alejandra. Thank you very much, Mr. Zine. Our next presentation um, is a legend in our own city. Um, Maria Luisa Arredondo is a woman who is not only a dancer, a choreographer, but who is a civic leader here in Los Angeles. And today we have the Ballet Folklorico de Maria Luisa here before us. Um, the history of this folklorico group began in the 1970s uh, in the San Fernando Valley right here in Los Angeles. Um, this is when the Ballet Folklorico de Maria Luisa was formed. And her teaching really was something that opened doors for so many folks uh, aged from 4 to 64, I think we've had uh, students, and come, come join me, Maria Luisa, um, who have joined her classes over the years um, for folks to learn the history and the culture, um, some of the dancing, the music of Mexico. Um, the art of Folklorico um, brings pride, a sense of accomplishment to some of the young people um, and folks who are not so young as well um, that we'll be seeing in a second. Um, Maria Luisa's training and professional dance experience has given her tools to teach students, um, as I mentioned before, from ages 4 to 64, which is quite an impressive span of students. Um, it's been several years now of teaching the various colorful dances, um, but as she says, it doesn't stop here. It's something that keeps going and keeps growing. Um, and it's been her mission for students here to be able to exchange their dance and their experiences uh, with dancers and artists in Mexico as well. 
And um, so, as she says, our classroom has no borders, and she's been able to take part in exchanges across the border as well. Um, and the ballet are proud members of the Associ Asociación Nacional de Grupos Folclóricos. Um, she's performed in Los Angeles County, in San Fernando Valley, in Orange County, in various cities in Northern California. Um, she's no stranger, and the group is no stranger to audiences. We have a number of individuals who I'd like to um, say their names, and maybe Maria Luisa would like to say a quick word before they start as well. Um, we have Doris Lara, Mich Michelle Sanchez, Ana Alvarado, uh, Sochel Villa, who is the uh, daughter of, I think, some of us know her very well, Sandra Figueroa Villa, who uh, runs El Centro del Pueblo. Um, and she's more nervous than Soche is this morning. Uh, Belen uh, Olague, uh, Hector Castillo, Peter Campos, and Bill Huidobro. Uh, um, with those folks, we'd like to uh, hear something uh, from Maria Luisa, and then we'll be treated to a wonderful folklorico dance in celebration of Cinco de Mayo. Maria Luisa, please give her a hand. Thank you. <laughs> that was quite a nice thing you said about me. But I've been around for quite a while, as you can hear. My name is Maria Luisa Arredondo, and I'm honored to be here with you to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. My students have various regions they have learned, and today we're bringing you that famous Jalisco, land of the mariachis. You know those strolling minstrels that you see on happy days like this. Ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Gracias.
the city of Los Angeles, we want to thank you, and Ma Maria Luisa and all the dancers, if you'd like to come, come up, we have a, a certificate on behalf of the city of Los Angeles to present to you. Come on over. Um, a certificate of appreciation today to the Ballet Folklorico de Maria Luisa. Please give them one more round of applause, and happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti. We have one more special presentation today by Councilmember Gruel. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Mr. Uh, President. Um, today, colleagues, I'm recognizing two special individuals who immigrated to America in search of that American dream and have made their dreams come true. As we celebrate the great battle of Puebla and Cinco de Mayo, we are reminded of the great military victory of the Mexican army against one of the greatest armies of, of the time, the French army. On May 5, 1862, the Mexican army won the battle of Puebla, overcoming tremendous odds and defeating a formidable opponent. As we've talked about this morning, Cinco de Mayo is established to symbolize the Mexicans' courage against one of the best armies of that time. That is why, following the same dedication and commitment as the defenders of Puebla, we recognize our citizens who have migrated to our country and have achieved those same ideals. I'd like to introduce uh, two individuals and tell you a little bit about them. Rigoberto uh, Melendez immigrated to America at the fresh age of 17 years old and immediately settled in Los Angeles working at a warehouse earning $2.60 per hour. He worked in the fields of the state of Washington and then returned to Los Angeles where he worked as a dishwasher at a local fast food restaurant. Within two years, Rigoberto became the manager of the restaurant. Little did he know that would be the restaurant um, business is his way of life. Today, Rigoberto Melendez owns eight restaurants in the San Fernando Valley, including uh, some in Las Vegas and Bakersfield and is in the process of opening five more. He truly is an inspiration to Latinos who have worked hard in achieving their American dream. I'd like you to uh, give a great round of applause for Rigoberto Melendez. I'm going to introduce Ice and then I'm going to have you speak. Okay? Right, 
The other uh, individual I'd like to recognize, and I will have them both speak, is Isa Lemuz, who also came to the United States in search of a better life. He came to Los Angeles at 18 years old, where he worked as a waiter, eventually becoming the head cook. Today, Lemuz is the proud owner of Metapon Restaurant, which he named after his hometown of Metapon, El Salvador. Just like our two recipients, our great city of Los Angeles is full of inspirational stories of hardworking immigrants who today are business leaders and have made the San Fernando Valley a better place in which to live. I want to recognize um, also Jose Roy Garcia, who is here, who um, is uh, one of those inspirations as well, and his wonderful wife, uh, who many of you know and have been leaders in the San Fernando Valley. So I'd like to present uh, this certificate uh, to Isa and also ask him, let's give a great big round of applause for Isa Limas. Thank you. As a member of the small business uh, community, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Roy Garcia and his wife for all the great support uh, to us, and also like to thank uh, my friend and business partner, Mr. James Hoyenga, who's been a great help building up my small business. Thank you. Thank you. So, what can we say? Thank you very much, and I, uh, we try to do the best, the best we can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we'll make sure that all of you have the addresses of their restaurant, so you can frequent them in the San Fernando Valley. I just think it is a, appropriate on Cinco de Maya to honor those individuals who have made all of us proud here uh, in the city of Los Angeles, particularly in the San Fernando Valley, and particularly in the Second Council District. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Skrull. This concludes our presentations for today's meeting. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Cardenas Garcetti, Grill, Han, LaBonge, Ledo, Miskowski, Parks, Perry, Ray, Smith, Rivera, Gosa, Weisstein, Padilla, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. The Council is officially in session. First order of business, please. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Smith moves and Mr. LaBonge seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Ms. Gruel moves and Ms. Perry seconds. Uh, Ms. President, do you wish to take up public comment at this time? Uh, let's uh, take public comment as the first item after dispensing with consent items. Let's go to the agenda and call a matter special. First items on the agenda, items one through four are items noticed for public hearing. Council should open the hearings and continue the hearings and ordinances to May 26th. Okay, members items one through four now before us and I do not have requests from members of the public to address the council on these items. Public hearings are opened and without objection continue to May 26th. Next items, please. The next items are items for which public hearings have been held, items 5 through 17. Item 5 is confirmation uh, to Board of Animal Services Commissioners. A Public Safety Committee report has been submitted. Do you wish to hold that one on the desk? Uh, let's hold that on the desk temporarily and we'll take this matter as the first item uh, called special. On the balance of items 5 through 17, colleagues, uh, these matters have had public hearings. Motions from the floor would be required to reopen the public hearings. Do I have any requests for specials? Ms. Gruel? Yes, I do. Item number six, please. Six call special by Ms. Gruel. Any other specials? Seeing none. Item 14, uh, this call special for a minor amendment. Okay, 14 call special by Ms. Misikowski. Any other specials? If there are none, uh, let's uh, also hold item seven temporarily on the desk. On the balance of the items, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Those matters are approved. Next items, please. Mr. President, 11 through 13, forthwith, please. Forthwith on those items. Thank you. As a request of Mr. Garcetti. Next items, please. Next, excuse me, next items are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 18 through 29, 10 votes are required for consideration. Okay, without objection, the council shall consider items 18 through 29 today. Uh, before taking requests for specials, let me recognize that there are no requests from members of the public to address the council on these items. Public hearings are open, public hearings are closed. Specials, beginning with Ms. Gruel. Thank you. For Mr. Garcetti, item 18, if we could have it continued for one week, please. Okay. Members, any objections to continuing item 18 for one week? If not, that shall be the order, and the new hearing date will be May 12th. Any specials? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. 
Those are approved. Mr. President, could I ask item number 23 to go forthwith, please? Forthwith on 23 and forthwith on 22, please. Next item. Next items are items, uh, excuse me, closed session items uh, 30 through 36. And the city attorney has requested that items 31 and 33, 34, and 35 be continued for one week. Okay. Any objections to continuing those closed session matters? Seeing none. Uh, new hearing dates for 31, 33, 34, and 35 is one week from today, May 12th. Items 30, 32, and 36 remain. Let's hold all closed session matters on the desk. And if that's the end of our uh, agenda, before going to public comment, we do have one commissioner to uh, consider today. Let's uh, call him forward at this time. Members, this is item number five. We have a report from committee recommending approval. Let me recognize Ms. Misikowski. The committee is scheduled a meeting this morning, but we were only able to get one member uh, and not keep Mr. Caro waiting. Um, but I did have a chance to have a very pleasant conversation with Mr. Caro. I was very impressed with his interest, his observations, and his willingness to serve on what I told him was one of the um, more difficult, if not challenged, commissions, uh, just because of, as, as he already recognized, a lot of passions that surround the issues of our animals and our animal care and how we treat them. So I was very, uh, very pleased to recommend uh, very positively his, his uh, recommendation and confirmation today. I will note that he is a resident of the 10th Council District and sometimes we do raise the issue of uh, diversity in our commissions in terms of their geographic district uh, composition and so I think that is also a, a plus. And let me ask Mr. Caro to uh, welcome to the Council and see if you'd like to just address us of, with a little bit of, uh, of your thoughts and observations about the, this thank, appointment. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, members of the Council. Why don't you pull the microphone a little closer? Excuse me. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be sitting here today, to be nominated by the Mayor and to be considered by the Council. I'm, as I mentioned to uh, Councilwoman Mizikowski, I have been a lifelong resident of Los Angeles and care very deeply about this city. It's a city that I love. Um, with respect to uh, this current nomination, I am also a lover of animals, and I would um, say to the Council that if uh, I were, my nomination were approved, I would uh, work very hard and diligently to protect the animals in the city and protect the residents of the city as well. I know that these issues are complex ones, and I know that they are nuanced ones, and I also know that they engender a lot of passion in people um, for, for very legitimate reasons. And uh, I would just like to say that uh, I am prepared and I am motivated to uh, help uh, move uh, the department forward and to uh, help uh, modernize the city's policies and make the department more user-friendly and hopefully uh, um, and, and definitely lower the rate of, of kills right now. Um, that would be certainly one of my principal goals if I were approved by the council. And again, it's a pleasure to be uh, sitting in front of you and to be considered by you. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Um, as I said, members, uh, I think uh, I very strongly recommend and ask that we confirm this uh, appointment with a unanimous vote. Thank you, Ms. Misikowski. Mr. Zine. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, and I apologize for not being at that uh, meeting this morning. Other activities took up my time, and it was with that, uh, and I apologize I wasn't there, and I would have been there to uh, ask you a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, Terry Friedman. Is that the judge, Terry Friedman? Yes, it is. A good friend of mine when I was uh, working with LAPD in the Valley. He's a very he good man, and I was, it was really my pleasure and honor to work on his behalf. Um, I learned a lot from him, and uh, I would aspire to serve the public as well as he does. And he's, he's done extremely well. And he we really work together has. on many, many programs. But I noticed one thing that, that I struck here, uh, work seven days a week. I like that. Work seven <laughs> days a week when you were working for Terry Friedman, who's now a, a judge on our court. That's correct. The, um, the job, definitely, of a commissioner in that particular department, which has definitely had some turmoil, some controversy, some hostile situations, some shall we say, um, illegal activities that have taken place against some of the members uh, of that particular department. There, there's been a, a quite an unsettling uh, environment, and I uh, wish you well in that endeavor and want to remind you that on the 26th of June, 26th of June, we're going to be hosting uh, that commission in my district uh, and discussing issues and concerns uh, 
with the Commission that deal with the public's concern about some of the issues with that particular department. So uh, that day hopefully won't be 110 degrees in the San Fernando Valley, but we will be meeting in my district and I welcome you on board. You've got a wonderful resume and working seven days a week, uh, that definitely qualifies <laughs> that you'll be an outstanding commissioner. Is this your first uh, venture in the commission with the city of Los it Angeles? Is my it is my first venture, yes, sir. Okay. Um, but I'm not unfamiliar with the San Fernando Valley. I grew up in Van Nuys, and so if it, if it is 110 degrees that day, I'll be prepared. There you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Zine. Other members wishing to be heard? Seeing none, let's open the roll on confirmation. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And thank you for your service to the city. Forthwith on item number five, please. Thank you. Before continuing with matters called special colleagues, let's now turn to general public comment for today's meeting. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the council on matters within our jurisdiction but not appearing on today's agenda. Uh, Madam Clerk, if we can put up a 10-minute clock, please. And I'll call uh, a handful of names. If you would form a line behind the podium, that would expedite our public comment period. Our uh, first speakers, there's a delegation here from LA City View Channel 35, Cameron Keyes, Frank Ulloa, uh, Suhail Helu. if you would come forward. And maybe uh, if you all want to designate one spokesperson for the group, that um, would be helpful. I think, uh, I, th I think we'd each like a moment to speak. Sure. Go ahead. Um, President Padilla, respected council members, I'm... Uh, Cameron Keyes. I reside in the Councilman Garcetti's district, the 13th, but I work here downtown uh, for LA City View, Channel 35. I'm the post-production supervisor there. And uh, I'm here on my own time when with my fellow employees, uh, some of my fellow employees. All of us couldn't be here um, because some of us uh, over there are, are in the process of broadcasting this, this meeting right now. My friends Dave Brown, Camillo, Monty uh, are responsible for uh, the broadcast of this, this uh, meeting and um, we're the people uh, you don't normally see at a television station. We're the people that switch the programs and operate the cameras and do the graphics and cut the video down um, and you shouldn't normally see us but you're liable to be seeing more of us in the next few weeks uh, at this podium because we're very concerned about the uh, motion presented last Wednesday to allow the LA Cable Television Corporation to take over management of Channel 35. Um, I've been in the television industry 24 years. I've worked at post-production houses and TV stations and um, independent contractors all over the city. And I've never seen a television station that's run this lean and this well. And despite that economy, you can see that we brought uh, some of the Emmys the stations won under the management of Tony Agani. Agani. And um, this is really unprecedented that uh, we have a, a, a station that's one of the premier municipal television stations in the country. And there may be a consideration that we might want to give up that control to an independent contractor. I was at a presentation last night uh, for um, retired Fire Chief Don Anthony that was produced uh, by the, the cable television, our, our station. And um, uh, Councilmember Mizukowski, you were there. Tom LeBonge, of course. Uh, Councilman Zion, you were there, of course. And there were, there were tears in the audience. And that's because that television station gives us the ability to make a connection with people. It makes a connection with the electorate. And that's what these awards represent. They represent our work and they represent that ability. Um, that's what we're wor worried about losing under the control of an unknown entity. Um, under Tony Agani, as I said, we've worked hard and we have a station that I think, in my experience, is a little jewel uh, of a facility. It belongs, to, it belongs to you and it belongs to us and it belongs to the people of this city. And as you can see, it's far from broken over there. Please don't fix it. <laughs> Thank you. Let me ask either some of the other speakers here. We do have, you know, and, and I apologize for not giving you a ton of time, but plenty of other speakers wishing to address the council today. And also, as you well know, this is an, an item 
in front of the Budget and Finance Ad Hoc Committee as they're considering the next fiscal year budget and they're meeting on a daily basis, uh, either at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning or immediately after council on council day. So you're welcome to stay and address that body specifically as well. Go ahead. Good morning, council president. Good morning, council members. We are the Channel 35 employees that broadcast your council. Your name, sir? Frank Uyoa, videotape librarian at Channel 35. We are the Channel 35 employees that broadcast your council and committee he hearings. We are the guys that make you look good. We are here because of the motion that was passed by the council that would eliminate our jobs and give them to Channel 36. It is unfair for the council and the committee to try and sneak through the elimination of our jobs without talking to our union and us first. Council Member Parks, you asked the CAO to report back to you about consolidating Channel 35 and 36. That consolidation would eliminate our jobs. We will be in front of every session of this committee and the council to make our feelings known. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning, President. Good morning, Council. My name is Suhail Hello. I work for Channel 35. Uh, very briefly, I just want to tell you I've been almost every in each district. I've covered events, I direct, I shoot, I edit. And at the same time, every place we've been to, our coverage was the only coverage. And your voices are the only voices. We are the only link that you have to this city. You are the only links that you have to, to reach the community, to reach the neighborhood. And every place we've been to, they've always been happy that we're there. We have a great staff. Each one performs three to four different tasks. And we just need your support because your voices are there too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate the group being here. Uh, let me now call the next group uh, for public comment, and if they can come forward as a group. Uh, el próximo grupo, por favor. Uh, Jose Maria Ochoa Esquivel, Francisco Losornio, uh, Obdulia Franco, Ana Pantosa, or Pantola, Miguel Angel Perez, Ediogenes Lubianos Rumbos, Valentin Vázquez Díaz, Villalobos Gómez. Jose, por favor. Uh, si pueden dar su presentación como grupo. Señor Presidente, los Mr. President, Council people, han venido siempre los campesinos, the campesinos, farm workers have come always, always come a felicitarlos to congratulate you ayudando. because you've been helping us. Y esperamos and we hope que los sigan that, that you keep supporting us. Como mexicano que soy, as, as a Mexican that I am, tengo orgullo I'm proud este of país. being on, in this country. No me da vergüenza I'm not ashamed tengo. to no say it. Una letra. I don't know a letter. Pero estoy aquí del 60. But I'm here since 60. Si quieren, cre creen que estoy echando mentira. And if you think that I'm lying, Informen con el Seguro Social. get information from Social Security. Y también, and also, Con el de with the Department of Police. Yes, arrestado. If I've ever been arrested, minuto, not even a minute, Mr. President. Y tengo un orgullo and I'm very, estar aquí I'm very proud of being here with you. Como mexicano because que soy, as a Mexican that I am, Mexico, y Mexico and the United States are neighbors. Y hay que verlos and we have to familia. see them as one family. Es muy eso, señor that is very beautiful, Mr. President, you council people. Por eso, yes. That's why estamos aquí we are here fighting so that the, you let us give us the land to work and to help the people economically. Because we plant products con el sudor de la frente, with our sweat, dale mucho and para there's a lot of food that comes out for the children grandes. and the older people. Gracias. And thank Queremos you. Escuchar de los otros en el grupo también, por favor. Okay. My name is Olia Franco. I've been, I have had that piece of land for 12 years. Y para nosotros and for us, it would be a very strong pain to lose it. And we come a, a a to ask you help, esa ayuda because that help para toda la for the whole community. Es, es, es de, it's de a product naturales. of natural things, y, y pues es, es para todos. and it's for everyone. Y gracias and thank you a todos ustedes para to everyone for helping us. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, my name is Valentin Diaz. 
We are here always fighting for the land that is the one that gives us the product for everyone. And also to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, that is a triumph for us. Y para pedir siempre to, uh, always ask por la tierra, por la tierra, por nuestra tradición, por nuestra tradición, y darle gracias a and todos to los give concejales thanks to all que han hecho de esa tierra, that have, that have made of that land a product for us. Y como siempre, and as always, vive Emiliano Zapata. <coughs> vive Emiliano Zapata. No? And why not? El señor Francisco Villa. En Francisco Villa. Gracias. Thank you. Hi, my name is Francisco Lozoni. I'm a graduate student from the School of Social Work, and I'm here in support of the campesinos. And I just want to say really quick, in, in honor of Cinco de Mayo, uh, and I'm here to support the campesinos that have been coming here uh, to struggle and to have your attention so that you can hear them and you can hear their struggles. Uh, some of these people have been farming at the land for over 12 years, and all they need, all they want is your ear. I know that your, your times are, are, are busy, you have a busy schedule, but I'm, I'm here to just add some support and to continue on the struggle. And like I said, in honor of Cinco de Mayo, I will stand behind them until uh, their struggle is, 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 is won. Thank you. Miguel Angel Perez, Los Angeles Land Use Coalition. I'd like to uh, make a couple of comments in what I observed here. People here observing the celebration of culture, Mexican culture here. There's something that, that I see that's a little, uh, well, big time lacking. We all have to look and respect not only the culture of the, uh, the people here, indigenous, but we have to also respect the political and economic history here. That's, that, that battle of Puebla in Mexico, well, this is Mexico still. This is occupied Mexico. And we're still talking about the land issues, the land issues that exist of occupied European forces that still exist today. And the question of 41st and Alameda is a clear cut, pure example of political economic struggle that exists today. The campesino and myself, Mexicanos and Chicanos, still battle on a daily basis of the imperialist forces that make us feel that we're begging and become strangers in our own land. 41st and Alameda is an example that we are not strangers in our own land. We are on our own land. And just what the campesinos always said, and the gente, Mexicano and Chicano people. Aquí estamos y no nos vamos. Tierra y Libertad. Thank you very much. This concludes public comment for today's meeting. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Uh, next item, Mr. President, item number six was called special by Council Member Gruel. Item number six now before us. Ms. Gruel. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'd like uh, representatives from the Department of Water and Power to come up to the table, please. Colleagues, uh, this was an item uh, that uh, we introduced a motion a while back. I can't remember exactly when, but it was relative to uh, economic alliance um, and uh, the fact that we were not able to, to fund them. And I was unclear as to the process whereby economic development funds were given by the Department of Water and Power. Um, I've read the report that they provided in Commerce, and I apologize, I wasn't there to be asked some of these questions, um, but I wanted to ask you all a few questions. Uh, what is the source of the funding that you utilize for the Economic Development Group? The second question was, what, would be the, what was the budget for the last fiscal year for this group? And what is the process of people finding out about uh, getting these funds and um, also then applying for those funds? And if you could hold my time. Good morning, Wendy Yancey, Water and Power. The source of the funds for the Economic Development Group is the power system. As you know, we do operate under two separate distinct budgets, and that is the water system and the power system. The source of funds for economic development is the power system solely at this time. 
Um, the budget last year, if I'm not mistaken, this is John Chin, uh, the Assistant Director of the Economic Development Group, was in totality $20 million. Um, Tw $20 million last year. That's correct. Correct. That was given. Okay. That's correct. Um, and the outreach efforts are um, multiple. They have, for example, this year alone, um, have had multiple breakfasts in conjunction with some um, assistance from members of the city council, the mayor's economic development team, and they've gone out into the community and um, talked about their program as, a, as it fits into the whole city economic development picture. Um, a number of components make up the economic development group in addition to the incentives or the actual dollars, and those things include working with all the city departments in something called fast tracking um, it, to help a business um, get around all the, the loopholes or the, not the loopholes, but to get through the process of um, working with the city of LA. So it, the group comprises a number of different things which are outlined in the report. The community outreach efforts are vast and now we will actually, as you know, because of the, um, the edict from the mayor relative to the PR contracts, which includes community outreach, we will be assisting corporate communications, which I'm a part of, will be assisting the economic development group from henceforward with their community outreach efforts to make sure we include now, in addition to neighborhood councils, more effective um, um, with just other community groups also in addition to what they're doing now. So we're evolving um, as it relates to community outreach within the Department of Water and Power, and we will continue in that vein. And I asked some specific questions earlier relative to the Economic Alliance and uh, why they were not funded. And you responded relative to they didn't apply uh, for the funds um, and the previous year they had. And I asked about deadlines and so forth. Could you, exp uh, what I understand is it's on a first come, first serve basis that has been in the past. Uh, it, it is. And after speaking with you, I'm, I'm actually going to, um, we're going to report back if you would allow us to do so and come with a more formalized um, plan or policy relative to applying for those funds so that um, because it's first come, first serve, everyone can know about it and know that, per you know, that. Uh, applying earlier, of course, would allow for you to have a better access to the funds. And I think that that's a, um, that's a, that's a better approach at this particular juncture so that someone who applies um, after the fiscal years began, they, have, they will then be able to have a better opportunity to, to also um, get, a pot, get a piece of that pot. Right. And, and colleagues, what, I, what I'm going to ask for is, I think, just what Winnie just, just mentioned, but is um, I think we found out from this experience that um, even you know, if, if the funds are in fiscal year, uh, start in July, and you happen to apply in December, and you didn't know there was a first come, first serve, and the money was all gone, and there wasn't a prioritization, and it wasn't transparent, uh, that was what I found uh, was problematic with the Economic Alliance issue. Um, if you'd come and said, we didn't have the money, uh, it wasn't part of our priority, uh, that I, I could have said, okay, let's figure that out. So I believe that it's a, a new day in City Hall relative to transparency of process and prioritization. Uh, $20 million is a lot of money uh, being spent on economic development groups and wanting to understand what the outcome is um, and to be able to quantify the success of those programs. So I'm asking today, colleagues, if we can, um, uh, maybe in the form of a motion, and get a second to this, uh, which is that we have a process um, that we come back, uh, that you identify uh, how uh, an economic group could apply for these funds um, and uh, a way in which that will be publicized. Because my concern is there are a lot of economic development groups that may be in Mr. Park's district or in uh, Mr. Garcetti's who had no idea that these funds existed um, and what the uh, ability for them to compete for them and in fact might have been beneficial to parts of your district that actually needed that economic development assistance and would be in the same vein as what Department of Water and Power has as priorities. So I'd like you to come back. Uh, with that status, or excuse me, that explanation of that process. Um, and two, uh, looking at um, whether or not these funds are essential to your mission. Um, as we look at, and all been discussing water rate increases and uh, power transfers, all those issues, I think we need to look at uh, some of the programs and say, is this where our $20 million should be going? Should it 
be less than that? Should uh, is it in fact bringing revenue by creating more businesses in the city who are going to be ratepayers? Um, and I did have some questions on some of the items that were actually funded and if they fit in that uh, priority as you've identified in business and uh, expansion and retention. Um, so, colleagues, I'd like to make that that motion that we ask them to come back. Um, I think you said within 30 days. Uh, was that plenty. appropriate? 30 days with a process on how these funds are uh, distributed and how that's communicated to the public. And secondly, uh, whether or not this fits within the priorities as we look at being more efficient and uh, whether or not uh, it's appropriate for it to be at that amount or less amount or not at all. Do I have a second on that motion? Mr. Okay, there's a second. Smith. Mr. Labanche. Thank you very much for uh, putting it in. I just wanted to make a suggestion, members. I'm familiar with a lot of these programs, and you mentioned, Wendy, that some officers aren't familiar. And I know we're going to have a tough budget year, and we're going to remove liaisons from departments. Well, maybe we should get liaisons from our offices to go extract this information which is there, because I see the brochures, I see the, them at community, I'm not picking on water and power or any department, I see them out there, but I think we need to get a, a, a better communication going from our side to all these different city departments that are out there doing the work, because I am aware of what you've been doing for multiple years, and I believe Bernadette Kirkwood is the head of this mm -hmm. department. Wendy, I'm just saying, Bernadette Kirkwood yes, is the head of this department. And they really want us, all these departments want us to help them get to, the, get to the source, get to the people, to make that connection. So I think we have to think, too, if I could put a friendly amendment, that the CLA, if possible, or the President of the City Council, or each council office, uh, redefine their liaisons to these departments so that the information flow is a little better. Because I, 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 I all constantly have to... Uh, stress to my staff that we have to get out and meet people. We have to go to wherever these departments are because they're not all in this one building. They're throughout the city and get that information so we can give it to the people. So it's not a friendly amendment. It's just a friendly idea. So, uh, but I want to just stress that, Mr. President, Mr. CLA, and Ms. Gruel, that we all have to go out because the thing is, and I know I'm getting a nice chuckle from the great councilwoman of the 11th district, but the thing is, there's so much change in all of our operations. In, 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 in the city, there's people, John Felicello, anybody remember John? He was there at Building Safety for a, about 100 years. And now we have Dave Lara. But Dave's going back to the field if, uh, if the budget calls for it as it is, because they're getting rid of council liaisons. I don't know. I didn't mean to pick on you, Dave. OK. Mr. Labonte, I have a question for Thank you. you. Are you yeah. talking about? Economic development funding, you're talking about water rate increases. I'm, no, I'm talking about all information. All our departments work real hard to try to get there, you know, Alex. And they work real hard to try to get the information out. And, and I don't want to see them get slammed because we're not doing enough to get the information back from them. And I would just suggest, and I really mean this, to go to these departments and, and make a relationship because there's people all up and down trying to do what we're trying to do to make the city better. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Gruel. Thank you. Um, and, and Tom, I, Bernadette's been fabulous and has been out there and meeting with groups, and I, I wholeheartedly agree that they have done uh, that outreach effort. My only question had been if, if uh, one, Economic Alliance, who had received the money before, was never notified that they actually had to apply again or a timeline, that there's no process where I could pick up a paper right now and say, this is how you do it. Um, this is how you access those dollars. Um, and I think that's what I'd like to see for groups who may not necessarily be connected with neighborhood councils or whatever, or if you're a new council member and are not given that, here's some of the, the funds that you can compete for. And so I think it really is necessary to have a transparent process that people can say, this is how you access. Um, so I don't, I don't disagree with you on, on, on some of your points, but I think uh, in, the, in the new day in City Hall and looking at all the transparency this is one fund that um, yeah, I think needs to be a little bit more clearer on how you access those funds. Mr. LaPange. I absolutely agree with you, Wendy. It should be crystal clear. And all of this, that we should support the Economic Alliance and other groups. And there's many partnerships that not only this department, but other departments have uh, made with community organizations 
to do that. But I greatly support the economic alliance in this effort. But your point of making it crystal clear so anybody walking down the street could turn in and get that information. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Labonge. Other members wishing to be heard on this item? If not, is there any objection to the amending motion by Ms. Gruel? If not, then we can consider item number six as amended. Without objection, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Um, Mr. President, item number seven is next, and I believe there is a request to continue that matter for two weeks, which would be May 19th. Is there any objection to continuing item number seven for two weeks? Seeing none, so ordered. Next item, please. Next item is item number uh, 14, and that was called special by Council Member Ms. Sikowski. Ms. Ms. Sikowski, item 14. Um, this is just a verbal amendment. Uh, the, this is allowing the fire department to hire another class, but it says up to 45 recruits. We're going to go up to 90 um, that they will make offers to. That allows them with, after they take the medical, some fallout, but they, they may get uh, 50 to 60 good candidates. So this was discussed yesterday in Budget and Finance Committee, and uh, I'm just making that verbal amendment today. Okay. Any uh, further discussion on this item? Seeing none, let's open the roll on item number 14 as amended. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Uh, do you wish to clear the desk before going into closed session? Let's do housekeeping. Uh, council has motions for posting and referral. Motion shall be posted and referred. And that clears the desk. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing further, then you... which item number? City Attorney has advised us that Mr. Parks is recused on item number 30. Uh, we do have other closed session items, so don't leave quite yet, Mr. Parks, but let me announce for the record that Mr. Parks will not be part of closed session uh, deliberation on item number 30. And now in conformance with California law, the council will adjourn into closed session. Sergeants, please clear the chambers. Welcome back into open session. Madam Clerk, item before us, please. Uh, the only item before Council is item number 30, and that is a request to continue that matter for one week. Okay. Uh, without objection, members, item 30 is continued for one week. We'll consider that matter on May 12th. Next item, please. And that clears the desk, Mr. President. Colleagues, this is the end of our agenda. Do we have any announcements today? Announcements, beginning with Mr. Parks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have two announcements. Uh, on Saturday, May 8th, uh, the uh, 11th annual Revlon Walk and Run for Women will be held at the uh, Coliseum uh, Saturday, May 8th. Uh, this will be the uh, 50,000 men, women, and children will be involved. And this uh, organization has raised over $30 million uh, for the issue of cancer. Uh, the other one will be on Friday, uh, May 7th. Uh, the LA Coliseum Commission will be unveiling the uh, 1984 Olympic rings. It will be held at the uh, Swim Stadium. Uh, Rayford Johnson, uh, former uh, Olympian and Hall of Famer, along with Anita de France, Paul Sutherland, and Steve Soberoff will be on the program. It will be held at the Epic Center, 3890 uh, Menlo. Uh, and it's so something in which we're bringing back the Olympic spirit. Thank you. Other announcements, colleagues? Mr. Labonge. Just again, want to uh, remind everybody, following that great walk in beautiful Exposition Park in the 8th District, it's open house at all our fire stations throughout the city of Los Angeles from 10 to 4, and a pancake breakfast will be held at the Fire Museum in Hollywood at 13. 55 North Coinga. It's an open house at all our Los Angeles City fire stations this Saturday from 10 to 4. Thank you. Other announcements? Final announcements? Ms. Perry? Please rise for adjourning motions. Ms. Grohl. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a very sad incident that occurred in my district on Friday afternoon. Mr. Zahn, you mentioned when I saw you Friday evening about what was occurring on, near Van Owen. Uh, it was a, a devastating traffic accident uh, that occurred at Kittredge in Van Owen. Uh, it occurred on April 30th. Um, Hector Rivera, three years old, his life was cut short as a result of an auto accident. Accident occurred at that corner. Um, the car uh, veered to the sidewalk and hit a family uh, that was walking that early evening. Um, he was standing with his mom and two siblings on that corner, um, and the car had lost control. So I'd like us to send our um, condolences and, and wishes to that family as they have a very difficult uh, time in dealing with the death of their uh, three-year-old little boy. Other tributes? Ms. Perry. Mr. Parks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd ask that we adjourn in memory of Geraldine Harold Backus. Uh, she's the wife of Pastor uh, uh, Carl Backus uh, of Southside Church of Christ. Funerals will be held on Thursday, May 6, at 11 a.m. The viewing will be at 9 a.m. at the uh, church. Ms. Perry. I want to adjourn in memory of Consolacion Pedro Alves Umali, who was the mother of Felicia Trong, who works with all of us in the Office of the City Clerk Administrative Services. Her mother was born August 10, 1918 in the Philippines. She was the eldest child of 12. In 1984, she left the Philippines to join some of her children here in California. She enjoyed reading, planting flowers, and most importantly, helping to raise her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She will always be remembered as a loving mother, sister, and friend who inspired and motivated all. And she lived a life that was ordinary yet extraordinary. And she's survived by all of her nine children. Her service was held Monday, May 3rd at Mission Hills Mortuary Chapel. Final tributes. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned. City View, Channel 35. Your city, your channel.